um, what is called a maniac about uh, your the harmonica. You, yeah. I, I told that you've been oh, yeah. studying eight hours a day. Well, I used to. Yeah, nowadays I don't really play that much. Yeah. Well, that's why we. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's why we have Ben Bowman here, and yeah. he, he's in. Uh, a Dutch great uh, harmonica player. Yeah. He has he has the knowledge of anything we don't know. So yeah. that's a great moment for me to give to him the microphone, so uh, he can yeah. ask you a few questions okay, cool. about techniques and harmonicas and a one on one for the for the audience. And uh, that's the end for me. And I uh, would say it's not the end of Blues Moves TV of radio, Thanks, but man, Ben is taking over for me. Well, Jason, so mm -hmm. what do you think? Could you do the same on stage using out of the box harmonicas? Nah. No. No. No, I wish I could say yes. What's mm, for for the non-harp players? What's the biggest difference between a out-of-the-box harmonica and one which is customized by you or Joe Spires or yeah. Brad or anyone else? I'd say the first thing is volume. I mean, it's a little louder, you know, but, but that's not the most important thing at all. I mean, um, some of the harps that Joe made me are not very loud at all. Like they're not even as loud as probably a regular Marine band. But they're you know they're the way it, it all has to do with a reed is a spring, right? That's all it is. Yeah. And it has to do with the way the spring reacts to breath. And that's what it's all about. And there's and different guys have different things they do to get different results. And that's why like some you know, Felisco's a Felisco, a Harrison's a Harrison, a Bowman a harmonica, you know, is a is is yours, you know. And Joe is Joe, you know, Spires is Spires. So it's like they're all different ways of doing it. You're looking for in a harmonica. Does it have to be loud or does it have to give you confidence when you're on stage? Yeah, I like it to be comfortable. You know, number one. I mean, I want it to feel good in my hand. I have some great harps in here that play amazing and sound great, but they're not they're kind of not comfortable that so that's first I mean that's number one is I want it to be comfortable and number two, it has to be able to overblow like really perfectly, you know what I mean per, you know as easily as possible and then yeah, and then yeah, so I'm looking and I also like a well tempered harmonica, you know meaning that I want the draw reads to react with a similar amount of pressure. To the, uh, I mean the, the the top octave to the middle octave to the bottom octave, a balanced instrument like a piano, you know can become untempered, and one note pushes too easy and the other one's hard. That kind of thing really will mess with the way I. That's the difference between a harmonica I make, and a harmonica that Joe makes or Joe Spires or Brad Harrison makes or probably even you, is I can get a great harmonica that overblows perfect as good or sometimes even better than some of those guys but the tempering and the tuning the tuning's the other thing i mean you, you know you guys really bring out the life in them i mean here's an example right here I mean, what kind of tune do you prefer what do I you like a compromise just and i wasn't always that way w what about you i i was never happy with the just intonation uh, well as soon as you start in going to overblows you have problems with just intonation i agree but it, i don't think it's a big enough deal to worry about too no. bad yeah you can overcome it but i prefer to compromise just tuning as, yeah. uh, as oh, so a compromise oh you're talking about pure just a true just yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah no i yeah you're, it, it's almost impossible to overcome i mean yeah with any kind of overblows or i mean even some of the little walter stuff's amazing that he just i mean what he worked with with some of that but it's incredible but yeah yeah, yeah but uh, i don't i used to play equal tempered everything because uh, i played golden melodies and um i started to play some compromised just harps because um they came that way and um i fell in love with the chords and then um the warmth of them you know i mean here's a good example as i was going to show you this is a harmonica that i've tuned <laughs> I know. you know it sounds good when you play single notes <laughs> Okay, but it's, it sounds okay, but, and then, you know, Joe. And it's close. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, I can tune one better than this, but I just didn't, I didn't have my tuner this morning. But, but, but most of the time, mine don't come out ever sounding as beautiful as Joe or Richard Slay. On a low 
LOD. Yeah, Richard has a very excellent tuning equation. What yeah. advice would you give to a be beginner harp player? Yeah. Should he buy a cheap instrument, expensive one, mm -hmm. or a custom harmonica? Man, I don't think a, a beginner should worry about custom harmonicas at all. I mean, I, I didn't have my first custom harmonica until about five years ago. You know, so I've only been playing them about five or six years total. And how much did it improve your, your play? Well, quite a bit, but see, I was already ready to take advantage of what it had to offer. You know what I mean? But, I mean, I recorded um, many, many records up until the last two on um, Golden Melodies that had, I just set the action. You know what I mean? That was it. I didn't emboss or anything, you know. So, and I mean, they were pretty good. I, I think the best harmonica right right now, and forgive me for saying this, but the best is the Suzuki Fire Breath that's available right now. And when Harrison, when Brad comes out with his, it's going to be as good as any custom. I mean, out of the box, and I know because I've played them, you know, right off the line, right off the line, and it has to do with the machines, the modern nature of the machines and the way that we're cutting the reeds now is different than it was ever been done before. It's it's not even a reed machine, man. You know what I mean? It's made for to do other anything. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I'd say just like, you know, a special 20. The 1847 would be a great, I mean, amazing first harp. I mean, that's about as good as you can get. I mean, you know, out of the box, this and the fire breath are the best. The only reason I gravitate towards the fire breath over the 1847 is the, the length and width of the reed. If this had, and also the distance of the holes apart on the side L bothers me, but it, it doesn't bother other people. Yeah. Oh, especially for a beginner when you buy yeah. a different harp and you get used to the, 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 yeah. the size. Yeah. You and think that's what you need right, all the time. Right, exactly. And I, I think a beginner would probably like an 1847 way better than a Marine Band or yeah. a, even a Special 20 or something like that or a Golden Melody, those pretty awkward instruments actually. Yeah, in, in reality, they are compared to when you know the comfort of something like that or a fire breath. You mentioned overblows uh, yeah. two minutes ago. Um, for beginners, it's like magic overblows. Yeah. But I was thinking overdraws. How yeah. often do you use them in your play? I I use them a lot, especially the seven overdraw. Y you always hear me doing stuff like this. <laughs> bend them <laughs> you know and, and on the lower harps they're really really easy <laughs> or you know lower even But I like that chromatic effect up there. Well, it's in cross harp. It's you know, it's the flat five, so they're the f same as the four draw bent, which is such so an important blues note. And then, and then in a chromatic context, it's it's much easier to play the uh, chromatically from the one to the five in cross harp here than it is here without the overblow. You know what I mean? Just you know, so you know, it's very useful up there. And I mean, if little Walter had played that and had that note, it, I mean, God. He would have, he would have used it. Uh, it would have been the best, coolest thing ever. Like, I always try to think, what would he do with that note, you know? But anyway, yeah, yeah, I mean. So, yeah, I use that. Recently, I've just started using the the nine overdraw <laughs> in third position to get the same note, the, the flat five, you know. That harp needs some work, by the way.